In Dearborn, Michigan, there is an amazing museum with a sealed test tube containing the final breath of a great American hero. Or villain, depending on who you ask. Henry Ford idolized Thomas Edison. He was his boyhood hero. And so when they finally met when Ford was in his 30s, it must have been a great relief to find that Edison was a kindred spirit, someone who understood his dreams and ambitions. They remained friends until Edison's dying days, when he left Henry Ford a very intimate and peculiar gift. He gave Ford his dying breath. Henry Ford grew up on a rural farm without electricity, but he saw the meteoric rise of Thomas Edison through the newspapers. This was his hero. This was who Henry Ford wanted to be. At a General Electric mixer, he got a chance to talk to Edison and tell him about this project he'd been working on on the side, the Ford Quadricycle. Edison was impressed. He slammed his hand on the table and said, young man, that's the thing, you have it. The two of them became fast friends and would remain so for the rest of their lives. They even bought houses next to each other in Florida. And they would go on camping trips together. And these camping trips would include naturalist John Burroughs, President Warren Harding, a Firestone of Firestone Tires, Burbank of the Burbank Potato. These were like a who's who of industrialist magnates. And they'd like go and make a campfire and like, you know, roast weenies. And the two of them just got closer as time went on. When Edison was confined to a wheelchair, Ford bought his own so they could have wheelchair races, which is just incredibly cute. Edison equally loved Ford. He said, as to Henry Ford, words are inadequate to express my feelings. I can only say that in the fullest meaning of the word, he is my friend. The funny thing is, is both of these guys were notorious monsters, kind of. I mean, Edison infamously electrified an elephant, screwed Tesla out of money, generally treated his workers like dirt. Ford fought unionization for as long and as hard as he could. He became an anti-Semite in later life. These were guys who didn't give a lot of concern to the role of the little guy. They saw in each other a very unique kind of striving. So as the legend goes, Ford asked Edison's son Charles to hold the test tube up to Edison's mouth as he breathed his dying breath and then quickly sealed it. The truth is slightly more prosaic. There were just a bunch of test tubes in the room. They filled with the air, some of it which was Edison's breath and some of it which was just air. One of them was given to Ford as a memento. This was a very personal object and actually Ford kept it out of the public's awareness and in his own private collection until after he died. It doesn't really matter whether Edison's last breath is in that test tube or not. What is in there is friendship. A kind of friendship that only two titans of industry could ever forge. Subscribe here and watch more videos here. Well, I have a little trouble now and then, but that's because I'm getting old. But I've got a lot of ginger yet. <laughs>